The blender scene I have here is really boring. All the objects look exactly the same. In this video I am going to show you how you can improve this by adding variations to the individual objects but still using the same material for all of them. This is the node setup of the current material. For all the techniques I am going to show you in this video, we need the object info node. The first thing I want to do is to offset the texture of each cube to get rid of this repeating pattern. For this we need the location output of the object info node. This basically gives us a position vector to the origin of each individual object. You can see this changing when I move them around. To now actually offset the texture, we need to mix the texture coordinates with the location. To do so, I add a vector math node and plug the location into the second input. As you can see, the repetition is now gone. You can see this changing when I turn the vector math node on and off. Next I am going to add variations to the color. To do so I add another object info node and plug the color output into the second input of the mix RGB node. This color output is based on the viewport display settings in the object properties. Now you can set a different color for each object while still using the same material on all of them. You may also want to variate the pattern itself. To demonstrate this I duplicate the wave texture and make some adjustments. Then I add another mix RGB node and plug in both textures. For the factor I am going to use another object info node and plug the object index into the factor. This object index can be set in the object properties under relations. If it is set to zero the mix node uses the first input and if I change it to one it uses the second input. Next we are going to add a bit of randomness to the pattern. As you can see this random output gives every object a random value. We are going to use this to drive the scale of the textures. If I just plug this into the scale inputs, you can see that this is way too big. This is because this random output gives values between 0 and 1. To fix this we can simply add a map range node and use the 2 min and 2 max value to set the range of the scale. Now the pattern has a random scale on every object. I also want to quickly show you how you can use this random output to get random colors. To do so add a color ramp 
and add all colors to it that you want to include. If you want to use the full color spectrum, change the color mode to HSV, the interpolation mode to FAR, and set both stops to the same values. Now we only have the material index left. This is basically the same as the object index, but on the material level. You can find it in the material settings. To demonstrate this, I am going to select all the nodes we used to create the pattern and press Ctrl G to group them. Press Tab to exit the group. Then I select the red cube and apply a new material to it. I want it to be metallic and have a low roughness. But I still want to use the same pattern we had before. To do so I import the node group we just created and plug it into the base color. Now I also want the stripes on the metallic material to be white while still being black on the others. To do so I press tab to enter the node group and add another mix RGB node. I make the first color black and the second one fully white and plug it into the mix RGB node we already had. Then I add another object info node and use the material index to drive the factor of the mix node. Now I can go into the settings of the metallic material and set the pass index to 1 to make it use the second input for this material but still keep it black for the others. This is my final node setup. That's it for this video. I highly recommend you to use this node if you use the same material for multiple objects. This can make the scene much more interesting and realistic. Thank you for watching, see you in the next one.